and the new building now in some levels is you know so nice that i mm -hmm. think it's disingenuous to the younger audience the younger kids that come in here because they go Oh, this is crazy. Right. But it didn't start off like this. Mm -hmm. Right. This is our fifth studio now. Mm -hmm. Going back to the first one was 30 years ago. Yeah. You know, now mm -hmm. we sessions and, you know, Trick's vision of this whole hotel lobby, you know, event. Yeah. Uh, studio thing is a is a vision yeah. of a culmination of five studios right. that we've had where you know we built it without permits and, mm -hmm. you know yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know all that this is the one we did it the right way you yeah. know and permits mm -hmm. and everything yeah. you know so one of the things I like to touch on you started getting into it a little bit uh, earlier on was um, basically it's a segment we like to dive into that rock bottom okay. story okay. that moment mm -hmm. where. You're questioning, you know, it, it, like things, just, everything's just going wrong, yeah, and yeah. and you just, you know, you. And we all hit him. We all hit him. We absolute, all hit him. And and, and, and it's wow. like Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson has that quote where he's just like, "Man, it's such a beautiful time because, you know, the things that you learn from that moment, and it's like, you know, the the it strengthens you as a yes. as a person, yeah. you know. And God willing, you make it on the other side of that. Um, but just wanting to get that rock bottom story from you and um you know yeah and how you, you ended up coming on out the of other it. side of that you know it's funny because we've had um a, a few mm -hmm. um i think people always think you know they go you know particularly the three of us and the family and mm -hmm. all that and they go man y'all but there's been times where you know prior to the umbrella situation mm -hmm. we were you know um you know the game changes mm -hmm. a and r the guy that fucked with you that yeah, day right. is no longer in the game. Right. Um, the new guy that comes in ain't a fan. He got a whole bunch of other cats that he's fucking mm -hmm, with. Mm -hmm, oh, I know them. Mm -hmm. And we have to, what we call is get in the filth. Mm. And and in that filth, a lot of times, that means, you know, we've all built up high overhead. You know, people have the business and homes and things that we have to take care of. So the money's, it can go out quick. Mm. So when they go, no, and work slows down, we still have the responsibility of those things, mm -hmm. and 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 you have to be. Um, we had some times to where, like up in here, uh, before this building, mm -hmm. um, before the umbrella run, in between the you know the the two thousand to two thousand five run, mm -hmm. um, like people were like, "Yo, you got here goes some money to go get something to eat." Mm -hmm. Like it's been that mm -hmm. um, because where we have what we call we have to then circle the wagons and that's when we get down to the core of us mm -hmm. it'll be you know me and my brothers and my my mom will come down here and work she's been down here to do we still got to function mm -hmm. you can't shut it down because what we do know is that the song is going to change everything mm -hmm. there was a moment before the umbrella moment happened that it was not the best of times mm -hmm. and a, a and r was saying that they knew us uh, we had sent my brother out to L.A. to just live, to take meetings. So we got the expenses of those things. I mean, we were trying a lot of different things. Ultimately, it gets down to the song. Because even if you hate me mm -hmm. and I walk in there with a record, you're going to love me. Right. You know, you can say all what you want to say. That's mm -hmm. why the game ain't, you know, this is a this is a game. Absolutely. <laughs> this is a game. And you're playing it and you have to not take it personally because mm -hmm. your ability to come back in here and this is where the sports thing comes in, and you go, it's fourth quarter, I'm dog-ass tired, mm -hmm. I'm mentally fatigued, mm -hmm. the game, people owe us money, da-da-da, mm -hmm. you know, they ain't not paying because mm -hmm. we ain't got no leverage right now because we ain't got nothing mm -hmm. in there. Mm -hmm. You know, a whole new regime has come in, mm -hmm. um, and you got to go in there and prove yourself again. So what we do is it's, it's, it's an ugly thing, mm -hmm. you know, Ain't nobody shaving. Mm, right. <laughs> Ain't nobody really, you know, we stay in here at the studio. Me and mm -hmm. Trick will be here, t you know, that not that any different, but, you know, all of us will be here till 7 to 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. just pinging and pinging, waiting to see when that moment happens. That's why that day when I told the story about Umbrella, it was a game changer mm -hmm. because it changed the situation. It changed up everything because without Umbrella, there's never no Beyonce. There's mm. no Mary J. Blige. There's no Mariah Carey. Even though we were doing the same things that we were doing prior to mm. that mm -hmm. moment of mm. Umbrella. Yeah. Um. So, you know, you do that. Single ladies was, you know, 
2010, mm-hmm. um, 2011, um, things shift again, and you got to start building back again. He's been here when we were in a rebuilding phase. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Um, I've been here when they were winning, coming home with six Grammys at a time, yeah. and mm. I've been here when it's, hey, man, we put a rebuild. We in here. Mm. And, and like he said, the 7 in the morning thing doesn't change regardless. Like, Don't change. At winning, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's working. You hit to the 7 in the morning, working, yeah. and if you're losing or if you're in a point where you're rebuilding or trying to get it out the mud, you're here till 7 in the morning plus. Yeah, right. You know? Yeah. And it's literally like getting it out of the mud. It's like, you know, you stuck, and this car's got to move. We got to get this going. This is a have-to moment. Mm-hmm. I think that where we are now, you know, where we are age-wise – you know we are in a build. We are in a building process right now, but it's different because we're not in the mud that in the way that we've have been. Right. But what we are is, um, we want to create music in this new market that mm-hmm. people are that because I think it's important for what we do, the so called super producers, mm-hmm. to get back into the marketplace so that, um, kind of move into this AI thing that's already come. What mm-hmm. I really feel like the difference is is that the feeling of music. I don't think AI right. is ever going to... Now, pop music, it's going to be able mm. to do the number thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. But for our music, nah, yeah. it's a feeling to I'm what we you. do. Yeah. And, and I don't believe AI will ever be able yeah. to create so they don't understand. the feeling. And yeah. they don't understand that. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, on the pop side, it's going to be, you know, all these quirky mm-hmm. type of things. And we'll just like in, in regular history, we'll fit in where we can get in with mm-hmm. our records. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But we got what I think one of the things that... Is, looked at that for me is what I loved about the 90s is was black music and R&B music and the music of the culture at that time was not for crossover purposes but made for us by us mm. and that was a that was a saying that we said during that time because when you looked at the 90s we weren't trying to appease the general market mm-hmm. what we were trying to do was go I need to get the streets talking. Mm-hmm. We, that's all you cared about. Right. It, I don't care if it was a ballot. I don't care what it was. You wanted the, the black community to give you an amen. Black radio. Mm-hmm. Quincy had a black magazine. We had mm-hmm. black clothing lines. Mm-hmm. We had all of these things that were for us mm-hmm. that we didn't care outside of us whether people were getting. Now, Janet was crossing over. Mike was crossing over. But even you go on Google right now and you go crossover artists from the 90s, they just going to show three artists, Mariah, mm-hmm. Michael Jackson, and Whitney Houston. Mm-hmm. You know, that's they're not they're, those are what the 90s are going to be remembered as black artists in their world, mm-hmm. in the pop world. Mm-hmm. But for us, all of the hit records and all the history of black music that has existed. Jodeci, Casey and JoJo. Mm-hmm. uh so many Teddy it, it, Riley. It was even Teddy. it was even white artists coming over and getting it like pink and oh, stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right, like, for sure. Everybody and still Britney is. Spears. Yeah, yeah. You still, know what I mean? still, still the same. That, we're still in that mode. Yeah, they still need the culture. Except nobody in history wants to be able to say so. When yeah. you start talking about history mm-hmm. and our music, they only want to talk about the things that go over into their space. But there has been the Isley Brothers. Man, I was watching them on the Drinks episode. Mm-hmm. Did, yeah. did you see that? Yeah. And, I did hits. not know. Man. They said Jimi Hendrix was their guitar and, player. And they go back in to the, the house. They didn't show them. You know, people get on, you know, oh, y'all crazy. No, they're crazy, bro. They've been doing it since the 60s. Yeah. Hit mm-hmm. after hit after hit after hit. But right. it wasn't never to build for the pop audience. Right. The only record that they ever did, and I'm sure they didn't do it for the pop, was Shout. I was right. about to say, they, got, they go from Shout to... Touch me, lady. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, right. yeah. If, like you got, that's you got like forty years in between that, like thirty years in between but in that. The history and of rock and roll. The... And I don't know if they're in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Yeah, they should be. But they should be. I think yeah. they're in there. Right, but the Isley Brothers and and the Whispers mm-hmm. and Gladys Knight and the Pips yeah. and all these things that came before my generation and then Bobby Brown and yeah. and BBD. I'll be so tired of everybody thinking that R and B is just ballads because that's what they're telling us. Yeah. But BBD, New Edition, mm-hmm. everybody did up we had up tempos yeah. and we had to dance. Right. So the things that come from us that go outwardly mm-hmm. are going into the rest of the world and everybody is now peeping the culture. Mm-hmm. I think we have to balance what we have in hip hop, yeah, with what we do in R and B and pop. Mm-hmm. So what we're trying to do with what I think we're trying, we've been having. You know, Dallas is over here working with us. Dallas Austin, mm-hmm. shout out to Dallas. Mm-hmm. Um, we've had different producers of our elk from our generation. We're all collaborating now. 
Mm-hmm. And we're all coming into this building. Because in we're, the '90s, it was y'all were competing. We were competing, like right. friendly competition. Like it we wasn't competing. friendly. Oh, it wasn't friendly. Okay, well, I we was, was cool real. with Dallas, but to some people, you'd be like, "It was real. It was real." Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the beef was real because it was like, you know, we used to be like, if you come in this building, you ain't getting out. You taking eight. <laughs> <laughs> we getting the album. Mm-hmm. You came to get one or two. Yeah, but we gonna we don't we want no need... room to be. Yeah, and, yeah. We, and and many times there were guys that they were supposed to go see after us. They didn't album go done. see because it's yeah, too crazy. Done. I'm done. We did over done. here. <laughs> in. Right. So, I know I was supposed to come over there, but uh, <laughs> we, uh, we I mean we could try. Something came up. Right. Something came up. So mm-hmm. you know I think that what the business needs is you know we're guys that. Are gonna be talk. We gotta start writing about love back in music. Mm-hmm. We gotta start mm-hmm. writing about the things that not just from the streets. That's part of us because we all know that we mm-hmm. all get it. And I'm never gonna sit here and shit on that because mm-hmm. we all came from that. Right. But we also had love in that. Pimps had love. Yeah. Pimps love they hoes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know the bottom bitch that they mm-hmm. love. You got mm-hmm. that emotion. <laughs> yeah. We're multifaceted you know? people. We're so. multifaceted right. people, and we're being marketed as a you know hip hop is the only thing that we are and it's unfair to us as a culture. Yeah. We got jazz, we got gospel, mm-hmm. we got all of these things that mm-hmm. are of us. Right. Mm-hmm. And it's for us by us. And yeah. so we want to get back to pushing that mm-hmm. sort of kind of agenda. So right now it seems like they just keep snatching up the little young kids with guns and and, and you, perpetuating yes. that and you know that, what it would that they know cycle. That at some point yeah. in time there's a chance, unfortunately, that that kid is not going to live. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then that catalog is gonna that catalog is gonna, gonna shoot up, and you're gonna be sending somebody else's kid to college mm-hmm. you know, and taking care of their family. Yeah, that's true. And that's yeah. the reality of our business. Reality, yep. and so we want to kick, you know, take these kids and get them educated. You know, Dirk, my boy. You know yeah. how long Dirk yep, was Dirk, with us. Um, yeah, Dirk. Most people don't know this. Dirk, during his time where he transitioned and got his run, I was on the road with Rod. Yeah. I had just left here. Right. But yeah. it was still the same label. Alamo in, in Rod. Sent him over yeah. to us. But right. Alamo definitely sent him over to and he that's where he became the little Dirk that he is today. Yeah. Was in that A room. Yep. That's over at Triangle you could Sound. Hear, you could hear but the But the lineage in that A room, yeah. the magic is future. Right. Was in future. his prime. Yeah. In that A room, yep. yeah, you know what I mean, yep. doing all his records yep. with, yeah. with yep. back when he was with Chubby Baby and everything, yep. yeah, and Epic. Chubby, so all our guys like Chubby and mm-hmm. Big Block and all these guys are down here from Atlanta. We, mm-hmm. you know, we all are. are it's a family type of thing, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. and so it it's, it extends out outwardly. Yep. But I think right. that we're all having a conscious conversation about what we need to do as the gatekeepers for black music to really kind of balance out the look, mm-hmm. the marketing, and what it is that we're really putting into the marketplace. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Definitely. Yeah, because black music is something that I've made all my money off of black music. Me like too. It's been my right. living, you know what I mean? And yep. I've been blessed to do that. So it's something that means so much to me. So when it's just getting pigeonholed into one direction and it's in it in the youth the kids come up they're gonna accept what's given like they're gonna find like if you're a music lover you're gonna find oh i like this about this you right. know what i mean so right. mm-hmm. it, i just wish it was a lot more and it's coming you know what i mean you got certain people you got like the summer walkers and the mm-hmm. and the blacks and you know what i mean what they're doing over at lvrn is amazing you know what i mean yeah. like for r&b and stuff so it's coming it's just we definitely got to get back to the point where that's we're, what, we're that's, showing our that's what I love about the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The game allows us to let that kid, the, and I've been saying this since 2004, here's the, here's the, here's the, the cocktail mm-hmm. to make it. Mm-hmm. You can now sit in your bedroom, and if you choose to be, and I tell this to people who sing, because mm-hmm. the rappers get it. They be down in the basement, always have been, right. under any circumstance, making whatever equipment they got, mm-hmm. making the records. Mm-hmm. It's our singers and, and and those that are not doing that. They want to be all so ditty. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I got to get in with They want to get the old school lady. record deal. Yeah. They want get the me a car. Yeah. Yeah. Give me a give studio me budget. Oh, and yeah. Then, give me the advance. Right. <laughs> give me the high rise. Yeah. They don't understand that they got to take a rapper's mentality, yeah. get, in the, get in the filth, Get, get the down in your there basement you and get creative and then build your audience brick by brick. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's single by single 
by single mm -hmm. by single. We are in a singles business. Don't make no album until you got a reason to make an album. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I hear people working on I'm working on my album. I go, for what? You ain't got Who, no fans. Who's waiting yeah. for it? So Instagram looks like I got 50,000 people. Hey. I said, that means you got 5,000 yeah. on conversion. Listen, that's what I'm and, saying. And it'd be like, I'm sorry, y'all. It was supposed to drop this week, but we're going to push it back. You yeah. can't do that. Yeah, if Nobody I was cares, if I was yeah. like an artist Nobody like Corey cares, Leroy, yeah. Ice Spice and them, I'm never putting out an album never. until y'all are begging me for an album. Y'all are downright saying, <laughs> give us the album. Because nowadays they use your album sales ain't what they used to be, but that's a numbers thing. Mm. So they use that to, oh, you sold fifty four thousand. Now we treating you bad. Now we right. looking like you fell off. Right. So it nowadays albums could be used as ulterior motives to make you look a certain type of way if it doesn't perform mm -hmm. in the in a certain you manner. The marketplace too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like you're you're while you're working on an album, somebody is dropping, 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 taking your point of entry into the mm -hmm. marketplace. Mm -hmm. They don't understand point of entry. Mm -hmm. Who are you going in as? Yeah. Who are you going in between this person and that person? Because people don't understand your yep. record got to get played on a playlist mm -hmm. or it's got to get played on a radio. Mm -hmm. Where does it fit in? Mm -hmm. Where does your music fit in in the lifestyle of where people who are playlist people you know, there's some people who got this playlist for, for women when they want to take a bath. Yeah. Where do you fit in that? Yeah. What record do you have that's going to go on that playlist and go, oh, I, I didn't know that kid until I was taking, and he got that record. Yeah. You might get known for that record, even though you pushing this one. Right. So it's the drop one at a time. Mm -hmm. I, every 45 days, you come in with something and mm -hmm. develop your relationship with your fans. If you got 50,000 and they going to come out and see you, mm -hmm. Go. Mess with them. Yeah. Deal with them like they're 100,000. Right. Everybody is not going to be Beyonce in this new market. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. You're not going to do stadium not, dates. Yep. Right. <laughs> and yeah. you can, but you got to get there. You gotta yeah. Build. And, and but people you can't. don't look at the fact that B came out in the 90s. Yeah. Right. True. Absolutely. B came out in the 90s and True. she's been fighting to stay who she is by creating ex what I call excellence equity. Right. Mm. She don't never, she got so much excellence equity out there mm. that she's got the, the hive that will kill you mm -hmm. Absolutely. about what her body of work has been for the last 20 years. Mm -hmm. That's it. So the reality of it is, is that you can't just be putting anything out. Mm -hmm. You got to say, have a, a, a level of excellence and set a bar mm -hmm. to where the music has to have when you go, oh, I understand how that affected. I don't care if it's rap. I don't care what it is, but it's going to affect people and how it's emotionally going to affect people is going to decide where your fan base is, where you tour, mm -hmm. all of these things. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. might be a worldwide artist and don't nobody know you even in the States, but go get that money worldwide. Yeah, exactly. Don't mm -hmm. be mad because you got to go over to the UK to get that money because yeah. your right. record blew up over there. Right. Yeah, exactly. We're in the internet era anyway, so it's you worldwide. can get it. You can get it wherever. Man, but if that's... you ignore that because you're trying to be with such and such and such, yeah. it's mm -hmm. about being able to do what you love and get paid to do it. Absolutely. Because mm -hmm. anything other than that is a hobby. Right. Yep. And there it is. Yep. There it is. Anything other than that is definitely a hobby. And a lot of y'all, and a lot of it is, uh, like, as you, you guys will take away from this interview, is the self-awareness. Like, a lot of things yep. Laney has sat here and said have been things from self-aware. Yep. Honesty with itself. Hey, mm -hmm. Tricky said send the record, but I don't feel like it's there yet, so I'm going to work more on it. Right. Instead of just saying, hey, this this is a hit. Right. I'm going to send it out to everybody. Yeah, send it this to is fire, because right. a lot of people will... Make up in their mind and not be honest with themselves about like it's, and learn it's mediocre. This, learn this game. Yeah, I think we touched on it a bit mm -hmm. um, in the sense that when you ask me about the new producers, and I don't want, I'm not trying to shit on them, mm -hmm. but I always see those guys that were beat makers once mm -hmm. that really go, oh, I got to learn the art of this. Right. Like I've been with some guys and they go, okay, now teach me. Yeah. I didn't, I've been with guys that had hits mm -hmm. that as beat makers. But they don't know how to finish a record, and they're paid right. based off of your ability to finish. Mm -hmm. So when they want to get a beat from you, and they have these cattle calls, what do you call them? Uh, song, what are they call, song? Uh, what do they call them when they writing camps? Yeah, yeah writing. Oh, camps. those writing camps. camps. Are, those yeah. camps. Everybody throwing their beats in. They don't know oh, where the beats man. came from. The people don't. Yeah. But it's all said. Don't know who wrote what. Yeah, it's all. It's a mess. <laughs> it so is. when it's time to chop up the business, the only person that's gonna really thrive. Mm -hmm. In that situation is the label. Right. They don't care who y'all figured out. Right. Yeah, y'all fight over that. We're putting the record out. Right. In the meantime, they're collecting money. Absolutely. And yeah. you ain't nobody getting paid right. because they're waiting on, you know, this to get resolved about how who I said this at the writing camp. You right. took my idea. Right. So with the lack of education and the desire to want to know mm -hmm. 
is something that is really disturbing to me because, like Jason said, the book has been out there for years. I read the book. Yeah. About, mm-hmm. you know, contra- contracts. And I remember I would get a contract and I put it in the book and I would just read it line by yeah, line. Yeah, with the with words and go back and see, and like, back and what are they saying here? Yeah. What are they saying so here? So then when I talked to my lawyer, mm-hmm. I had a conversation with him that was, you know, per- and, and pertinent to what it is that was going on. Yeah. He yeah. wasn't talking over my head. Right. But once again, we cannot speed, you cannot speed read your way or speed career your way through this situation. Mm-hmm. There's so much about the reason why I love the music business is that there's so much to learn. Mm-hmm. I'm still learning mm-hmm. things about the music business. I can go back and learn from the guys that came before me. And when I hate when I talk to a kid and go, hey, you ever heard that record? No. Nah. Well, that means you ain't studying the game. Absolutely. Dude. This is a game to be studied, particularly for us, so that you know from whence this is coming around again. The single business is not new. Yeah. The single business used to be in the 60s when there was a 45. Right. But you have to understand how we got to where we are and then how to pimp it. Mm-hmm. You cannot pimp this game or you're going to be pimped. Right. One or the other. Right. And sometimes you're doing both. Sometimes you're hoeing and sometimes you're pimping. Mm-hmm. But you got to know when you're what. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that you can, you know, I'm a, as a publisher, I'm pimping. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. As a writer, I'm getting pimped. Right. <laughs> you know? right. So yeah. it's yeah. a it's a it's a reality. Yeah. Of yeah. what we have to self awareness and understand where we are in this business. Mm-hmm. And so many times, um, everybody's so ready to get the get the Rolls Royce mm-hmm. that they get pimped out. They don't understand. Oh, you just took that 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 and put that all on the on the car that's depreciating. Mm-hmm. And and no d- disrespect, because these new cats is getting a bag in a way that you know. Oh, there's a few bags out here. Yeah, yeah. it's definitely yeah. It's a few bags. Few, few bags. Shows, a lot of the yeah. these guys yeah. are getting the bags. Yeah, yeah. But as far as these labels concerned, mm-hmm. you know, you gotta watch. You gotta watch it. Mm-hmm. it ain't as, but if you're gonna be a touring artist, then be a touring artist. Go out and get yeah. that money and and understand that this is a game. It is a game yeah. to be played or to get played. Man, please yeah. don't carry too to much emotion. Simple, yes. I had to learn the simple importance between the the jargon if they say in advance or if they say fee. Right. Because mm-hmm. that changes everything. Everything. Mm-hmm. Because that advance is recoupable. Right. Mm-hmm. It's a loan. Fee, and yeah, that a fee loan. is that fee is you know what I mean? Yeah. So and these new producers that are doing beats when they get the desire to do more, if they get the desire to do more, mm-hmm. you can't come in, and this is a funny thing, you can't come in and say, because I don't believe that you're a producer because you make beats. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You're a beat maker. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No disrespect. Mm-hmm. A producer sees a project from the beginning to the end, and you play all kinds of roles. You may not touch nothing. Quincy mm-hmm. didn't touch nothing, mm-hmm. but he knew who to call. Get that guy. Get Eddie Van Halen to play guitar on that. Mm-hmm. Get this person. Get that person. And you're doing a lot of Svengali in, in production. Now, the reason why we were called super producers was because we was doing it and doing all of Svengali. So when Jermaine had an act, Mm-hmm. Jermaine took that thing from the beginning, middle, and end, and he mixed it and probably went to the mastering. Mm-hmm. Now, if you're a beat maker, you never see that part. You don't even meet the artist. You you just, you're yeah. in the email. A lot of times you don't even meet the artist. You don't you're even know email. how to, yeah. you hit up the, the engineer and be like, yeah. hey, how's it going? Like, yeah. did, did, did y'all play him? Did y'all use the beat? Did y'all use And they get mad. You're not playing them? How did you play them? You know what the label like, for? I, I'm going to put this out because people don't know. Yeah. They will use your record to write the type line, take your shit off, and send it to somebody like us. Yeah. To fit, to do the beat. Yeah. Get it, to get it to down. Get real, to track. get a real record. You don't yeah. even understand that they just got the thing off on your thing. Yeah. yeah. But you didn't send it out there. You don't care. You, you follow don't know nothing. Nine yep. months later. You, and then when you then when you do find it, get it on, you're taking a fee that's undercutting the market, mm-hmm. that's bringing the fees down. This is what, when, when, the, when the business went through the, the, the depression, what we call the Great Depression, I mm-hmm. guess, mm-hmm. and they asked us to bring our fees down where we were 50, 60, 70, 80,000, in some cases $200,000 mm-hmm. per record, the mm-hmm. super producer, mm-hmm. the, you know, there was never a readjustment no, once, never. The, once they started making the money again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So they got now where every time, you know, they'll go and get a kid because they go, well, I don't want to go mess with them because I know it's going to cost us a lot of money. But what you're doing when you get us is that you're going to get a record mm-hmm. that's heat, that's going to be heat on it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Pharrell is the same guy mm, right. that he's always been. Right. 
he ain't not hot. Yeah. Yeah. Go to his studio and hear something he do. It's going to be something that's going to change somebody's career. Mm -hmm. And that's what's giving the management the power because they'll go. Mm -hmm. Managers will go sit with Pharrell. They'll come over here mm -hmm. and they'll hear the records and they'll go, oh, we cutting that. Mm -hmm. Where at the label level, you'll get the, oh, well, I don't know. And everybody's in the meeting talking about, I don't know. Mm -hmm. You know, the hook doesn't go far enough for me. And, you know. And don't I sound people, urgent. No. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't urgent. Yeah. And, yeah. I'm, you know, look, y'all, my friends that are a and R. <laughs> No offense, <laughs> but y'all know what it is. We all in this. Got to so, talk to him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Got to talk to him. You know, it's 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 a thing now where it's this is our thing. And, you know, when you get into wine, I started, you know, getting into wine years ago. Mm. And Napa has, Napa Valley has this saying, is for every grape, two, every grape they take, they re-put two. Mm. Because they understand that the wine business has to, got to, if you're taking something, you got to put something mm. back in order for the business to keep flourishing mm -hmm. we're not going to be in a good space and a business as we keep just taking and we're not putting anything back mm -hmm. we got to start to have a consciousness in the regards to what it is that we're doing so that because i hear people all the time particularly in black music go i don't it don't feel the same i don't love music the way i used to and then i go it's mm -hmm. some good music out there it's some great yeah it is. Just gotta just, look for you gotta yeah. dig yeah. Yeah. yeah you gotta look for it it's yeah. a lot of yeah. um it's like the place of music has changed. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. people use it as a caveat or a background music or something, but mm -hmm. no, it's still there. It's still there. You know what I mean? They may sell it to you with a cell phone, but yeah. it's still good And music. that's the record store now. You don't have yeah. to get up. If you really look, look at it, when you go to 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 Apple or you go to Tidal or you mm -hmm. go to Spotify, mm -hmm. it's the record store. Mm -hmm. And you get to go and see every old record you ever had. Mm -hmm. It's a simple proposition. But nobody's ever explained to people that this is why retail went away. It became on your phone. Mm -hmm. Retail is now on your phone. Now mm -hmm. we have to look at it because now you play it from there. It's also the new radio. Yeah. So you're streaming and now buying to in figure the same out. place. Mm -hmm. yep. How do you feel about streaming payments and stuff like the the Horrible. it's gotta get fixed? Yeah, gotta, we were just think it'll get fixed that. though. I thought it was gonna actually be an opportunity for us to get better from the bad physical deal deal that we had. Right. Mm -hmm. Streaming has made the physical sales deal look like we all like, let's go back to physical like sales. Like Christmas. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> because, you know, that's how we sold records. And, and that's how, you know, for those of us who people don't understand when they go, oh, you guys are look at all the money you're getting. But we're getting a pennies of the share of what's being sold. Mm -hmm. So at $10 a record back in the days when they were selling physicals wholesale, mm -hmm. the artist is only getting maybe 15% of that. We call it 15 points, mm -hmm. but that's 15%. I think Michael in his day at the highest was getting 25%. Mm -hmm. No ownership of masters. Mm -hmm. You're giving up your ass in perpetuity throughout the universe, mm -hmm. going back to that. And they pay us out of their share. Mm -hmm. So for every super producer and producer you got, when these people are putting 25 songs on a record, that's 25, in some cases, different producers that they got to take out of their artist cut of 25. Mm -hmm. So we're already taking a small percentage. This is this is was in physical. Mm -hmm. Taking that percentage and making it, and watering it down. There's some guys that be on albums if they don't, if they don't agree to be bound by the cap from a publishing standpoint, mm -hmm that get pushed down in the numbers so far that they're actually making negative money. Mm. If there's a way to really kind of understand that you're getting negative because I've come in, I'm getting full rate, Trick come in, he getting full rate. Mm -hmm. This guy, this guy, this guy, you mm -hmm. getting... We're all of the A-list producers mm -hmm. come in, so then if you're a new guy in the, in the, in the negotiation, your attorney is going to fight for you to be bound by the cap, which means you're locked in at a percentage rate. Mm -hmm. When you're not bound by the cap, it means that you're the numbers that allow you because get pushed down because you only they only pay for ten songs. Mm. So when the artist goes here's eleven, twelve, that math is getting watered down, and that new guy is getting so you could be like, yeah, I got a song on 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 da -da -da -da's album mm -hmm. and be making no money. So then when you do get that statement that comes in, you mm -hmm. go, where's my money? That was in the old days. That was now that looked good compared to what happened yeah, with the streaming. streaming because now what you just said and what Snoop said is mm. I can how is it I can have a million streams and if I should at least get a dollar, right? Yeah. That's a million dollars, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's still not the lion's share. We're getting less. Mm -hmm. So you get a check for uh what is it? Every 1500 uh streams is 
Is an uh, album sale? Yeah, one sale. sale. One album sale. One sale. Every 1500 is an album sale. One yeah. sale. But that's not to the same scale as a physical sale. Right. And then so, each, each platform pays differently. Right. I don't, and that's and a that's, whole other. And that's a well, whole other That's movie. because if, you're, if a subscriber is free, right. then they give you less on the scale mm-hmm. for the subscriber uh, that pays. Okay, mm-hmm. so Spotify has a, has a free side and a paywall. Right. So, so it's different. The Guys, free side yeah. scale of that pay of that stream that person is streaming is not paying you the same. So you might have a million, mm-hmm. but how much of that is free from the free subscriber mm-hmm. versus the paying yeah. subscriber? So that's why the numbers, when the royalties come in, start looking crazy mm-hmm. because you're like, you can't, then you have no control over that. The mm-hmm. only thing that you can do is own your masters, mm-hmm. put your own shit out, mm-hmm. and get at the front of the line. Mm-hmm. Because when you're in the traditional role where you're going, oh, let me be on your record. I want to be on that next Chris. No, no disrespect to Chris. But in the way the deal is, we, you know, what I found out when we even did deal with Chris record, mm-hmm. I did the full, uh, uh, the full moon record. Yeah. Oh, okay. What we realized was that, and Jason did that deal for me. Mm-hmm. And when, so the record goes double platinum. In the physical sales world, we expect the checks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. We about to eat. We about to eat. Yeah. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. record goes 2.8 million. He got 30 something songs on there. When I when we call the label and when I get on the phone with the lawyer, he goes, oh no, we don't do it. It's not, we're not doing it. It's not a co-op no more. He goes, you go against your record, against your... Against the 30... You playing songs. against yourself. Mm-hmm. So if you didn't get the single, mm-hmm. you and people are just streaming, it's going to take you longer to recoup whatever advance that you got mm-hmm. because then you're just looking at hopefully that people discovered your record on the internet mm-hmm. and it'll pop back up. If it's a single, you straight, but you're only going against yourself. So when we're really 3 million, we really not 3 million. We really... it's, it's So when people go, I'm triple platinum... Mm-hmm. And when they go on it's platinum, mm-hmm. it's platinum because you beat yourself. <laughs> mm-hmm. Your record went against your dollar that you get, and you get and you're making money off of that song because that one song's got a billion streams. Mm-hmm. And then so and, and so when you look on, you know, they have those stars mm-hmm. next yeah. to the hottest records, mm-hmm. you can basically do the math in your head of where everybody else is if it ain't got no star next to it. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. You know, right. so there's a real reality to that. Most people never get to the point to where there's a residual to back end to be had, mm-hmm. so they don't even know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they don't even know that you might be owed. I'm paid on records that I I still get residuals and royalties on my publishing and on points on records that I did 30 years ago just because the deal was structured correctly. Right. It's funny you say that because I deal with that. I have um, producers under me, and I have to explain it to them continuously. Like, we still have... We still have to focus on the next play. Don't get lost mm-hmm. on. You can't. I got this couple records know. in my catalog. Where's the money? Because you can't size that money up. Listen, with, in today's, you can't. You just gotta the, let the, it the drop. The play for hopefully... producers in the future is this: mm-hmm. you're an artist. Mm-hmm. We get. I gotta get in the sticks. I gotta get in the basement with you. Yep. Mm-hmm. And we gotta build, and I gotta create a partnership. Mm-hmm. The partnership between the the, the producers. And the artist, and it has to be something that you believe in that can go, and that the, that there's a covenant that we going together, mm-hmm. because you can't get there and then the other person, the artist, try to fuck you out the deal. Right. You got to get it on paper in the early stages mm-hmm. um, of what it is when it works, how it's gonna cut up, mm-hmm. how we gonna bust it down, mm-hmm. because I'm investing in you. Mm-hmm. Every song I do, every time you come to my mama house <laughs> and I do a song. Mm-hmm. Or every time I come to sessions and we do a song, we're investing in you when you don't walk out of here with a bill. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So now nice. we're investing. I'm a partner. Yep. Mm-hmm. We're partners. Now we got to open up the top the conversation. Yep. When you blow up and you go on tour, I want a piece. Mm-hmm. People talk about they hate the 360, but that's the whole mindset. Mm-hmm. One, the word 360 has gotten a bad rap because what it is is that saying that if I gave you value where you had no value at one point through this way, mm-hmm. through my songs, mm-hmm. through what it is that I'm doing and spent this time with you, why isn't it that I'm not, should not get a piece of, it don't have to be equal, it doesn't have to, it could be a scale, it could yeah. negotiate that, yeah. but why isn't it that I can't get a piece of the touring, mm-hmm. a piece of the merch, mm-hmm. because I was here with you before all of these people were. In the trenches. Right. Mm-hmm. So because it's going to be, I'm going to be the easiest guy to forget mm-hmm. when, the, when the shit hits, you know, when it goes. Right. So I got to be hard now mm-hmm. and understand my value mm-hmm. and go, if I fuck with you, mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. We're going to do this, and we're partners in every in every way, and deal with these situations as partnerships. Once you do with that, when the next whatever happens, you're in and you're getting rich. That means we're partners in on the master ownership of the masters. Mm-hmm. You might be the label and say, well, you as an artist, we're still you're you may not own the masters, but we're gonna be you're gonna do a participation deal. Mm-hmm. I own the masters because I put up my money. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm letting you sleep in my house. Mm-hmm. I'm feeding you. I'm taking money out of my family's pocket mm-hmm. to make sure that you're good mm-hmm. while you're in this stage. Mm-hmm. And so when you get to the plateau that you want to get to and you get glassy eyed and everybody starts telling you how dope you are, mm-hmm. this contract is going to bind us to say, you can buy me out yeah, for right. the value of what <laughs> I, what you're making. Yeah. But at this point, if you want that, I still want we're getting we're getting money and we're splitting it. Mm-hmm. So now we're at the front of the line. We're not both of us. Get, you getting twenty five, and I'm getting a piece of or twenty or fifteen percent, mm-hmm. and I'm getting a piece of yours. Mm-hmm. Now we're at the we we giving them fifteen percent to collect and get all the money, mm-hmm. and the rest of it we are busting down between us and going. And those checks are coming in monthly, depending upon the, the distributor. Mm-hmm. That's how you survive in this game now, yeah. right? You gotta, but muscle. with doing that, you can't just sit back and here play, get on my beat. You gotta really use everything that he didn't told you in his story. Yeah, right. Use all that kind of stuff. Right. Use your knowledge. Use your the things you learn and really have a real love for the game. And and and, and then you know what I mean because it's yeah. gonna be your taste and stuff that's gonna because be able now to you're make the label. you that good. People people don't understand that they think the distributor is the label. Mm-hmm. Sony has always been the distributor of Sony labels. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. With Columbia. They got a distributor, and it was a hustle. When you looked at the contract, they charged you 10% or 15 Sometimes they can't, but what we would try to get it down to is 10%. But they come in with a 25% distribution fee mm. and then take all your shit off the label side. So the you have to get, so they're going to take it in. The gross money comes in mm-hmm. in the old school way. They're taking 25% for just distributing it, mm-hmm. and then they're going to take all of the other stuff that they didn't told you in your contract that they're going to take away. So by the time you might have a big record and thinking you're about to get a check for $2 million or $3 million, and by the time they nickel and dime all of those co- things in the contract, you get a check for $800,000. Right. Now you got to split with, got to cut up between us four, right. <laughs> us three. Yeah. We got to chop that up. That's mean you getting whatever. Mm-hmm. Then we got to pay half of that in taxes. Mm-hmm. And you got to pay your commission to our various lawyers and managers. Mm-hmm. And guess what you walk away with? About a buck twenty-five. Right. And, and don't let it be a sample in it. <laughs> don't let no be no sample in it. Okay? <laughs> so there we go. Yeah. Right there. That's the quick math. <laughs> right. And it's the same way. But now when you go to these distributors, now you're going right to the to the plug for the damn Exactly. Thing. So now, exactly. for the most part, you get to go in there and say, we're taking 85%. Mm-hmm. So... If a if two million dollars comes in, take your fifteen percent off, mm-hmm. and now we getting the rest of that money. And then if we have to bust it down, we still walking away with some money, mm-hmm. some real money. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's <sighs> game on game on game. Yeah, it's a, it's a different <laughs> time, and I, I think um, one of the things I, I wanted to ask you is like, you know, what are what are some of the the trends that you see um, in music that you know, are are starting to develop over the next few years. Like some of the, whether you like them or not. Like, what are some of the, the mean, trends that I you see? I think the the one obviously we're talking about, um, and everybody's whispering about is the AI thing. Mm-hmm. Um, the unknown for me with AI is how it's going to be involved in terms of and how it'll work in black music. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, I really do believe what I just said about when people really learn the math and you go, oh, the math is in my favor to do dot, 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 dot. Mm-hmm. That it's, you know, you have 200,000 people who fuck with you that are paying $10,000 in the subscriptions. Mm-hmm. I believe subscriptions is going to be the thing. Mm-hmm. You're looking at $10 a month from 200,000 people, let's mm-hmm. say. Mm-hmm. That's serious money coming in yeah. monthly. Mm-hmm. That's why all the plugins and everybody and all the apps and everything are going over to the subscription, subscription base. base. So subscription... I believe is the future. Yeah, mm-hmm. I believe that you can have, you don't have to have a gazillion people messing with you mm-hmm. in order to make a good living to feed your family and to not be in a situation. Um, I think that you gotta, you know, obviously create price points mm-hmm. that allow the situation to uh, get done in a way that people can afford to be subscribed to you. Mm-hmm. Um, and you have to give content. 
I think the mistake that a lot of people make is that they don't understand that you have got to stay making content mm -hmm. and everybody plays a role. You got to have your future PR person there mm -hmm. or you got to give cut them in. Mm -hmm. You got to cut them in on it. Mm -hmm. You either got to have your marketing guy is your friend and he got to be learning marketing. And he's going to say, this is a pretend thing. We call it fire. And, I, and what me and Mark and Tricky call it is fire drills. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You got to be running it as if it happened. Mm -hmm. So even if you're in the basement and you're starting to make a beat, well, who's the, who's going of all my niggas that's sitting here, mm -hmm. which one of y'all going to be the PR person? Mm -hmm. Which one of y'all going to be the marketing? Which one of you guys is going to be, you know, this person? These roles have to be taken so that everybody is growing at the same time. He may not know nothing about PR. He may not know nothing about marketing, but start to learn it so that by the time we're in a place, you understand what to do with this record when it comes out, mm -hmm. how to help us win. Everybody's in on the in on it. That's the new band. Mm -hmm. The new band, the band ain't a guy on guitar no more and a, this dude on bass, mm -hmm. right? this dude on drums. It's this guy is marketing. Mm -hmm. This guy, you the front person. Mm -hmm. you, the, you the talent. This guy's the producer. And we down in my mama's house or we're down and, and you the videographer. Mm -hmm. and, and, and everybody can't be looking for a bag in that moment. We're all investing. Mm -hmm. We all should have, I don't care if you scribble it down on a piece of paper and you write it. You don't got to go to an attorney to get an agreement to say this is what we are mm -hmm. so that everybody is making in this investment. If I said right now I got a can of a, a Coke, a cola that I want a new water that I want to put out mm -hmm. and I asked you to be part of the marketing, but I'm going to give you some shares in the company. You would get that because mm -hmm. you don't understand. Oh, there's a business for, for water. Mm hmm. Oh, you can you market water for me? Yeah, I can do that. I'm gonna learn and I'm gonna go how they did this. Yeah. You have all this information on the internet to learn. Mm -hmm. YouTube University, all of these things. So you can learn all of these things. And so by the time your boys is done with the 25 songs that they're ready to stagger release over the next year, mm -hmm. you got a game plan. You've been shooting footage of the process to give to the community, to give to the to the internet, to mm -hmm. give to the different platforms. So the people feel invested, and then you you let it out a little bit at a time. So there's a period of time when there's nothing going on mm -hmm. where you can't be looking for a result because all you're doing is stacking content so that you can stagger it over a period of time. Mm -hmm. And then you keep, so that you're constantly feeding the audience. Mm -hmm. You're constantly getting something new from you versus, Oh, I did that. Not six months later, we got to right. go back. Yeah, and then, and then there ain't exactly. no pictures, right. ain't no video for the reels. There's mm -hmm. nothing. That's it. Because these That's platforms it. are there to the all pay you. Right. And they're going to pay you when you're on your YouTube. YouTube is the second biggest search engine. Mm. People don't understand how powerful YouTube is. Mm -hmm. If you get there and they look your name up, boom. Mm -hmm. Then you go and, and it starts to and let it let it happen. If your shit is good, it will find some. It will find people. Mm -hmm. And if Imagine. it finds 500,000 and that's your base, go out and do that shit. Yeah. And work that 500,000 people to the hilt. They're going to buy. Those people will be ravaged fans, though, for you. Right. They're going to go in there and buy the merch. Mm -hmm. They're going to go in all the things that's you because they are loving being a part of your movement. Right. So you got to give them an emotional reason to attach just like any other situation. Yeah. You can't wait. You don't have to wait till the nigga's famous mm -hmm. and go, oh, my God, I love you. No, you can love what they're, what they're doing in their moment. Right. And eventually, and it always happens, there's a record that – blows them up, mm -hmm. and then everybody goes back and listens to all 25 or 50 of the other records mm -hmm. that's been released. And they go, I didn't know this. Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> now you got that value of those records go up from just being things that you had sitting out there. Right. But I, you know, I, I call it like fishing. You can't catch fish if you ain't got no lines in the water. Mm -hmm. If you're just sitting in the boat and talking... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you ain't catch and you come yeah, no home without dinner. nothing. No damn. Talking to my spirit right now. <laughs> yeah. I was like, yeah, you just you you say hey. Yo, man, I don't want to be talking on this boat, man. Let's, go, let's, <laughs> let's yeah. get this shit in the water. And if we find out that there's no fish here, then we'll move and yeah. drop later other places. That's it. But too yeah. much of the game is I tried it. I need to know. I need to be the boss. I don't want to hear this. Da da da. Mm -hmm. That I saw. So everybody's marketing plan that worked for them mm -hmm. may not work for you. Right. It's different. Absolutely. You cannot take because Dirk broke this way mm -hmm. that you're gonna break that. Mm -hmm. way. Right. And that's the problem. With that's the downside. But you can learn what a, uh, a uh, there's a fusion curve in marketing. Mm -hmm. What that is. 
go learn what the hell that is so that you understand how to who you're talking to, when you're talking to them, and how to get them on. Mm. And then you're gonna move. There's always the early. We call them early adapters. They gonna mm. fall off first. They in first. They out first. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But you got to get the next twelve point five. Who are they? How do you identify them? That's what marketing is. But if you just putting your shit out and you ain't thinking about that, mm-hmm. you just putting your shit out. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and 125,000 records go up every week, every day. Yeah. Right? Every day. Yeah, I saw that. I saw you that. See that. Yeah, I saw you posted yeah. it. Yeah. I said, damn. 125. How am I gonna find go up your every song? Day. What? Are, that's the marketing. There's music that people haven't heard that's out there. That's, that's good. Unbelievable. Definitely. Talent. There's always. Times yeah. people that ain't getting hurt, but, but then there's people. It's like music all that the stuff that he just explained. They not doing right, but then there's on the flip side. There's music, and there was a, a article that literally hasn't been heard. Like nobody mm-hmm. clicked play, oh, and I don't yeah. know how this. You oh know. yeah, so much. Yeah, I forgot the number for the songs, but there's yeah, a lot of records that don't. Play. They have yeah. zero plays. They sit at zero, zero which is crazy because if you upload you it, you should go. Shit. I was about to say you should go to a different computer and. <laughs> Let that stream go downstairs. Yeah, hey, right, listen see to that all shit. Yeah, like, you don't even like your shit. You just say that's to like your shit. But once again, that goes to the word that I use, and you know, I don't like lazy. Yeah, yeah. just that's just lazy. lazy. If you open up a business, I don't care what it is, and you open it up, and you don't, you know, entrepreneurs work more hours than anybody else when you own your own business. Mm-hmm. There's no forty hour work week for an entrepreneur. We all in this room know that. Mm-hmm. Everybody in this room knows that. It's what you're doing, what you realize. I remember my dad, the first one of the first things about business that he taught us was if there's 50 jobs and there's four of us, we got to split them in half. Right. You're going to have 20 jobs, he's going to have 25, and everybody got to do whatever they're taking on, and you got to learn it, and you got to do it good until mm. we can afford to hire somebody in these areas. Mm. Right. That's just the business. Mm-hmm. That means that you're going to put in a 120-hour work week for that job or what it is that you're trying to get done. Mm, and if you is. don't want to work that, don't do this business. Yeah. Yeah. Or go hoe out and try to get on somebody's yeah. album and get that a piece of that 15% mm-hmm. that you're gonna be looking at now and streaming, going, Oh, I made seven thousand dollars. Yeah. Yeah, listen. <laughs> yeah. And that's and that's a big thing with me. It's like if you don't have the resources there, and then somebody I'm glad you said that. What do you say? You have to split the jobs. Yes. Because that's the reality to it, man. It's like you have to do you know what I mean? Yeah. Go, <laughs> I mean, there's yeah. things to be done. If it's we just... open up and said, man, bro, every time we come over your crib, you make these killer-ass hamburgers. Mm-hmm. We should open up a spot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we open up that spot. Well, that then decides we already know we got a product. Yeah. It's 100 people making hamburgers. Mm-hmm. But why his burger? Yeah, we like these burgers. And we, we felt know, like we could. We know that burgers <laughs> is hot. Yeah. And what you're doing. Yeah. But now how do we make that and get grandmothers and different people to come to our little stand. Mm-hmm. Well, we got to find a... And he might be like, I want to get a big store. Well, we can't afford a big store, but there's a little hut that's available yeah. over there. And you start small. Mm-hmm. This is the process of any business. Mm-hmm. Nobody starts off McDonald's. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Amazon. Apple. Yeah. In the garage. And, and, yeah. and business, they <laughs> you know call it the A and B. Yeah. Nobody wants to fuck with your A. They only want to fuck with your B. Right. The B is the result. Yeah. And the A is the... When you were selling books at Amazon, right? Think about did you fuck with Amazon when they sold books? No, I never bought I even th- nothing from no. Amazon. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, I, I, I knew that they were around for books, but me no, too. I didn't buy books from Amazon. No. And it took me a long time to when they yeah. shifted, yeah, to understand what they were, mm-hmm. yep. to how to engage. And now, uh, think they dropping shit off every yeah, ten every, minutes. Every, every ten every minutes, days. Amazon. Yeah, you getting shit three. They deliver what four times a day or something like that. Same yeah. with Starbucks. They deliver after nine. Yeah, people don't understand that Starbucks. It don't sell coffee no more. <laughs> they lost money selling coffee. You know what they what they did? They sold everybody gift cards. So when you go buy one at thirty dollars, mm-hmm. and I get all these people who are buying it's a coffee, bank. It's a bank. It's a bank. Mm-hmm. I was talking to wifey about it's that. It's a bank. Yeah, Drew, I'm like, man. yo, and we don't understand. Starbucks so you go and put bank. your thirty dollars in. <laughs> Your ten dollars on the card that you bought, you don't realize you just gave them some money. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> that they man. just holding and that they now doing other shit yeah. with buying yep. real estate, <laughs> right? Doing yep. all kinds of McDonald's is a real estate holding company, right? They can give less of the shit that you like they burgers right. and fries. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, they own, own the that property. property. Yep. Mm-hmm. How many McDonald's do you see go out of business? 
None. Right. They just go across the street and be <laughs> brand new renovated. Right. I'm exactly. like, damn, they just put the new one over there. Shut this that one down, but it's a brand place. new one right there. This is the education that we have to understand that applies to our business. Yeah. It's no different. Yeah. Mm. But through the years, we've been used to just going, I make the burgers, I'll hand that over to you, and you do what you want to, and I'll take 15% of that. Mm-hmm. And then you'll go out because you were a success. And that particular, your particular burger worked, and you buying Benz's. I'm gonna say you got the cars, the, the houses. Cars. Everybody the women. go, I wanna do what he did. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he just happened to win, but he hold himself But he getting pimped. He getting pimped. But he getting pimped. Listen, man. He getting pimped. He just he, 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 he took and advantage of it. always make sure that you but he win pimped. so that you can be the example to, to <laughs> pimp the rest of these niggas. <laughs> the rest of these niggas. <laughs> to pimp the rest of these niggas right. out. Now you're right. So. <laughs> When you're look when you're looking at the game of where the future is, to go back to your question, mm-hmm. you have to educate yourself about what this is, mm-hmm. because if you don't, we're still going to be particularly as a community. This is the thing that we sell. We are a talent commodity. Mm-hmm. People grow things in other countries, cocoa beans. It turns into coke mm-hmm. going around the world. Weed. These things are grown in places. We grow talent. Mm-hmm. We grow. Things that have never been seen before mm-hmm. that make the world do things. Clothing, everything that we do that comes from our impoverished situations, we turn it into something out of necessity mm-hmm. that ultimately turns into the things that everybody does. Mm-hmm. We don't understand the power of that. Mm-hmm. So you got you know Dame Dash out here telling the people invest in yourself. Mm-hmm. People are li- not listening. Ah, oh, he crazy. He's as crazy because they're looking at other examples. They're looking mm-hmm. at the quick, other the, the quick, quick hits. What they thought at, was quick. And then at the big guy getting pimped. The one who winning. <laughs> right. And he's trying to show, get your we have an opportunity. I look at Country Wayne every day. He got this on uh you watch it? Yeah, Country Wayne's a prime example. Yeah. He out here winning. I love what Country Wayne doing. On the internet, him he's and, got a whole him and TV. Chase. Yes. Yeah, Chase uh Chase Walker who used to be uh, DJ Southern Bread back okay. in the day when you mm-hmm. DJ Southern Bread he's the one who's filming everything they came together as a crew oh, and they doing this. Mm-hmm. you know what I mean and they got a show a TV show that I'm riveted to that I wake up the first thing every day mm-hmm. to see what the new episode is and they're constantly I'll be mad when the episodes ain't up I'll be mm-hmm. I mean, what they what they doing? Yeah, mm-hmm. but they put. I mean, they hitting it every day. You get five different episodes. These little shorts that I'm, and I know that they're nothing. Mm. <laughs> I know that they're you know scripted. You know they yeah. out there doing their thing. Yeah, but yeah. I'm they in. They put together a team of actors. Yes. and stuff like that, and they do it. They do it right here in Atlanta. They do it right, right here, here in, these, in these neighborhoods in these cul de sacs. He's yeah. shooting it with an iPhone, bro. Mm, he, there's no circumstance right now why you, if you got an iPhone in your yeah. hand, yeah. that you shouldn't be in business. Right. From our business. So I'm saying this and I'm giving this play out, million dollars worth of game, mm-hmm. because this is the play. Mm-hmm. Get up, get that phone that you just spent $1,200 on, mm-hmm. stop fucking it off, mm-hmm. and turn it around and let it make some money for you. Right. You can And get on YouTube, get on the premium, get on these things and start to find your audience and stop looking to, to get it all in one hit. Mm-hmm. You're not going to get it all. Sometimes it's good to get walked on base. Sometimes mm-hmm. hit me with the ball. Mm-hmm. The name of the game is get on base. That's hit it. me with the ball. Hit, hit me with the ball. The oh, I'll take it. I'll take it. Because when I get the first, hey, look, when I get the first I'm base, stealing. I, I was gonna say, I'm stealing the second. <laughs> go. And I'm going to steal the third. <laughs> yeah. And then somebody come in and just run it. I need a teammate. I was going to say, I, I just need, need one teammate one to get me home. to do their job. And we all on. And we out of here. We all on. I know it's all on. Yeah. We are all on. You're right. You're right. But you would... You would be, and I know y'all see this and what yeah. you're doing, how hard it is to get everybody to come and play their role. Man, oh man. Everybody can't be the artist. Everybody can't be the producer. Yeah. And everybody, so these other jobs that labels have, mm-hmm. you become an expert. At some point in time, when, 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 when Trav blow up, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we all go our separate ways, but guess what you got? You got a skill now. LeBron mm-hmm. did it with his boys. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He all of them, he he was the talent. He's yeah. the mm-hmm. he's the artist. Mm-hmm. He went and got in the league. He said, "You can be my agent, but you got to go to when you are school these next four years. And then when you come out, and I don't know what point if he did it right away or not, but you got to have an agent license. But if you want." To work with me, you got to hire my boy, mm-hmm. teach him. He's going to be in school. And then in four years when he's out, he's going to be my agent. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He's going to do this. He's going to do that. And everybody took their job seriously. Mm-hmm. Uh, they weren't, he wasn't going, well, Bron, shit, man, I want to get out there and hoop with you, nigga. Man. Yeah. 
That's the problem. I could do it. I, I can do it. I can do what you do. And man, now man. you feeling some kind of way because he winning. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's doing what he's supposed to be doing, his gift. Mm-hmm. And you feeling some kind of way because you didn't you didn't get in that in that everybody got a role to play. Mm-hmm. Or are you mad because he's not just throwing you something because you standing mm-hmm. around him all day, but you're not bringing any value. So that's how my my family got on. <laughs> yeah. Terry Lewis took me to his house. Yeah. We sitting there. He says, "How you dealing with your family mm-hmm. and money?" I said, "Well, you know, things are just coming in." He said, "Teach him to fish." Don't give him a fish. Mm. That's how this got on. Mm. That's why this became what it is. Tricky got on. T- I taught him. Mm. I began to value is in the teaching. Yeah. Mm. So when people go, oh, trick, trick is this, trick is that. Well, trick got taught. Mm-hmm. You know, all these p- dream got taught. Mm-hmm. This is a teaching thing. A co- what I call it, what we said earlier, coaching, mm-hmm. coaching them up to get to the league and know how to become. Some guys go to the league and they just glad to get a check. And some guys want to win championships. Mm. I need Kobe. I need Mike. Mm-hmm. I need Bron. Mm-hmm. Those are the guys that I fuck with. Mm-hmm. That, that I see that have the potential to be those type of players. That when I invest with the coaching, you can take this thing and you you change the livelihood. You change the trajectory of your family for generations. Mm-hmm. This is now we're talking about generational money. We're talking about you know we we talked about the valleys and the ups and downs, but part of that valleys was that we know now what we're investing in. We're we developers now. We got a trucking business. Mm-hmm. We have all kinds of businesses that we're in that now we know. In the early days, we was taking that money. Oh, let's go up and get a car like everybody else. Mm-hmm. But I'm so now when that money comes in, I see the NBA guys going. I didn't use none of my contract. I just used my endorsement money. Mm-hmm. So all of my contract money is sitting over there doing this. Mm-hmm. That's what we got to do as a community mm-hmm. to start to change situations practically. Because you're going to get the money. Mm-hmm. It's what do you know what to do with it when it comes in. I didn't go to college. I dropped out of high school. Did you go to college? I did go to college. Yeah. I was my parents. I dropped out of school. Um, and 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 when I'm in dropping out of school, when my friends <laughs> was going to the bus the, the next year, and I was like, damn, I'm not, going, I'm not in school. Mm-hmm. I have some friends who were going away to college, mm-hmm. some who were going into senior year. Mm-hmm. And I realized quickly, oh, shit, I look like a loser. I realized I had to create a thirst for knowledge mm. in order to compete. Now, mm-hmm. it ended up I beat all of my classmates to the punch, to the million-dollar punch. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I got there before, if anybody got there. I never believed in going to get no job. Mm-hmm. I've never been able to hold no job. <laughs> I've quit so many jobs in the middle of McDonald's just being like, man, fuck this shit. <laughs> Leave the burger yeah, burning you, you and walk the fuck I out. I remember that story. Yeah, me and Coop. Yep. Some, quit, <laughs> quit, me and Coop quit used to be quitting McDonald's. <laughs> Coop be like, don't do it, nigga. Don't do it. Nah, <laughs> fuck it. this shit. Come on. <laughs> yeah, come with me. <laughs> come with me. <laughs> <laughs> we out of here. Um, but um, this, and I don't want, let's get to the question because I know. But what I'm saying is, is that you got to want to know. Mm-hmm. You have to create this thirst for knowledge. Mm-hmm. Where I was was people will see Trick because Trick has hits is, is hitting right now. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. we're we're connected. We do business. Mm-hmm. We're all talking. There's we can be at my mama's. People don't understand it. My mama cook dinner, and the three of us will be chopping up deals. Like this is how we do things because we're it's so much bigger than y'all make hit records now. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. as to go to say in the beginning when you said y'all work on hits, the hits are the reason. But it has to it can change everything. It, Jay-Z and Beyonce are an example of how to be outside of the record business. Mm-hmm. They use this almost as a loss leader. Mm-hmm. We use the music because what it provides for us is ability to do other things when you're smart. This is a much smarter generation than we were about the game, about mm-hmm. that part of the game. Mm-hmm. These kids are not trying to be in here 30 years. They're trying to get their money and get the fuck out mm-hmm. because they understand the livelihood. So these rappers... They coming in, hustling, breaking it down, getting these bags. Mm-hmm. They about the money. They don't care. I cut sixteen songs tonight. Let's get them out tomorrow. Mm-hmm. You know that that's the mentality. Get to the bag. Mm-hmm. It's the singers that want the art. Mm-hmm. That's up yeah. in here. I feel yeah, 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 this yeah. kind of way above. Yeah. And open, you know, I call it opening your veins up on the canvas. Right. You know, we're not in that business anymore. Mm-hmm. So if you're here, if you, it's a combo. We can do that, but it's got to be about making this money. Mm-hmm. It's got to be so that we can invest in the things that bring back to the community. So what I was going to say when we stopped mm-hmm. was that this information that I'm sharing mm-hmm. and the reason that I'm sharing it is because we don't know how to talk to each other like this. Mm. This is an example mm-hmm. of how it's done 
on the other side. Exactly. Mm -hmm. My yep. friends on the other side who go, hey, invest in, you got any little extra? Put it in this. Mm -hmm. Do that. Mm -hmm. That's how the community, they, we're, in regular life, in general, in the general public, we don't, they're, the difference between them and us is information, mm -hmm. access to information, mm -hmm. the desire for, to, for information. So I have these conversations in the sense that, in the hopes that if 10 people get to get what we talking about, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. take what we giving you and then times that time, go do give it to two people. Mm. Each person take two people and you do, you you invest the information back into our community. Mm. It's to share the information so the know-how, it serves us no no purpose as a community for me to have the information and die with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But do we do that? But then somebody has to go through all these things and learn it again. And the then, hard way. And then die with it again. And <laughs> when I light you up, here's the bigger problem mm -hmm. is that you don't feel no responsibility to, to pay it forward and to pay it backwards. Mm. So in the mafia, in the, when they doing they handle their business, that's the family. Mm -hmm. The family, nothing comes before the family. Mm -hmm. So the information of where we getting these bags and how we getting it, it don't go outside of the family. But and the, so the the family not only becomes your fam my family, but then it becomes your family. If your children, based off of the things that I've shown you and exposed you to and what you've been in, are, are don't do better than you, mm -hmm. you have failed them. Mm -hmm. Same for yours. Mm -hmm. If my mm -hmm. children don't do better, I have failed them in some mm -hmm. sort of way mm -hmm. because the information is there. The problem is, is that getting people to take it mm -hmm. and getting and people to give it in the spirit of I'm giving this because I know it's going back to my community. This is money. Mm -hmm. This is I tell my kids all the time. This information is your inheritance. Mm. The money people be thinking, oh, leave, leave that money, man. We spending that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I'm gonna show you how to grow it, how to make it, how to do it. Coda. My son is going through the process mm -hmm. of learning how to do this. You know this yeah, for a yeah, fact. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Definitely. he's learning marketing. Mm -hmm. He's an artist. He's putting his records out. Mm -hmm. Everybody goes, why don't they just do this? And he goes, I want to do it my way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's, there's going to be help there, mm -hmm. massive help for him and exposure. Mm -hmm. But he's getting it to a certain place. Mm -hmm. He's taking the same. And I respect the hustle because... A, we wasn't going to never give it out that way because it doesn't work that way. We can't just go, oh, go over here and do such and such and such. But what I can give you is this information on how to crack this code. So when everybody is here watching this, understand that I'm showing you ways to bust into safes. Mm. I'm showing you how to rob a safe, mm. crack the code. How do we crack the code of his songwriting? That's one category. How do we crack the code of the new music industry? Mm -hmm. That's a whole nother code. Mm -hmm. You can have two of the numbers. Mm -hmm. and spend years trying to get that third number, decades trying to figure out that third number. Mm -hmm. I'll give you two of them. Right. The rest of them you got to find on your own. Right. Mm -hmm. That's the name of the game. Mm -hmm. But if, to have none of the numbers, <laughs> Listen. Up. that's America. Yeah. They don't want us to have none of the numbers right. to crack the code. Right. Mm -hmm. You're getting two. I'm going to give you two. The rest of it is you go crack the code. Find that third one. Mm -hmm. third one. All Eventually, you find one last number. One last number. One last. Mm -hmm. One last number. Nah, Listen, that's that's and, that's man. On Drop that some note, gems. Yeah, this I was is why. Say. What I was what I was just saying something basic. So I'm glad you got all that out. This is why when we was talking about mm -hmm. his backstory and my backstory, and mm -hmm. we're coming up with as we're building this thing, the guests we're gonna bring on, and he would always say, you know, I came up in in tricking them studio and this and that, and I'd be like, cool, let's um let's line up some interviews over there. He said, we're gonna interview Laney. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, who's that? That's big, bro. That's yeah, that's the, that's the one. That's right. the one. He said, that's I'm the slim. one. <laughs> he said, that's the one. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, he like that's you know? the one. And I and I perfectly understand. And it's funny because I, I was gonna tell that. him to come in here at some point, but it's all good. But yeah, I don't even, but you know, it's like y'all can get him at a different time. But yeah. I send everybody out with a mission and an intention mm -hmm. of work the game, work the program, and then teach it to somebody else. Yeah. Teach it to your producers, mm -hmm. but what I had to learn is you got to hold them accountable and go, "This is what I expect from you in return." Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. think that Terry Terry was working in this very room actually a couple weeks ago, Terry Lewis, mm -hmm. um, with Yolanda Adams, mm -hmm. and I don't know if he understood in sitting here, his words created this. 
Mm. His teaching to me created this. I'm sitting here because it's me in L.A. and Terry Lewis and, and Trick and I forget some other people producer, but we're all in here and I'm thinking, God, like, this is like producer, songwriter, like <laughs> everybody mm. in here like is doing, has done it historically. Mm. But Terry was the one that got the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. He's mm. all of our, L.A. was, you know, we all owe it to him and Jimmy because they made the, the look of what this is possible. Mm. The fact that I got behind those doors, taking it back to the beginning of the conversation, to get the education was the reason why he was in this going, man, this studio is crazy. I'm coming back. Like, mm. I want to work here. And that made me go, man, you don't even understand. It was your words that seeded this. Mm. Like, and, I, and, and we're getting ready to do a project together um, that I can't say what we're doing, but him and Jimmy and Terry and me and him and me and Tricky are coming together on something to produce this artist. Uh, independently too mm. um and uh it's a known artist but we're gonna try to light her back up mm -hmm. um by uh, putting our forces together um and uh i thought man that'll be the culmination of those words and back in the 90s that he gave me mm. that's making it so i know what they did for me and my family mm. so that i give it out because it's just free game what you do with it is up to you there it is. is. Is this what it is? There it is. Definitely. And I have definitely um, benefited, like you said, from the lineage of Terry to you to right. Tricky to me, you know what I mean, to where I've even learned so much, you know what I mean, to where it's like, wow. You yeah. know what I mean? It's just yeah. wow because it doesn't stop, you know what I mean, even mm -hmm. to this podcast, you know what I mean? This mm -hmm. is a lineage of here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah, he's, yeah. it wouldn't be like I wanted to give knowledge out because of, so much that I had learned and seen, and I would go to other places, and they'd be like, "You're so good," or "This, this, how does this, how do you do this?" And I'd be like, well, "This is a standard where yeah, I come." That's from. how it is. Yeah, this yeah. is a standard. Like, I don't you know work I mean? like this. Yeah, and I really yeah. care about you know what I mean, advancing the culture. So yeah, it's definitely um. So whether you do whatever it is that you do, there is a maximization of that that you can do mm -hmm. with you know, this knowledge, mm -hmm. it, whether mm -hmm. you're doing gospel records, but the game is the same. And re if you're doing gospel music, the label, gospel labels is just as trickery as the regular label. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The game a is label the same. Is a label is yeah. a label. Yeah. Yeah. And it's the game is to get in there and put yourself in a position to where you're not a cautionary tale. Mm -hmm. Right. Ooh. And we know we all know the cautionary tales of so who many and what that should. Man, if he could have just did. So many oh, of them. Man. But and and then we learned how to reinvest in our communities with the money, and that's what's going to change us. Because what our our, our commodity is is the talent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Our commodity is innovation in in terms of creativity. Mm -hmm. And so once we recognize and accept that, that's not yes, that's not the only thing that we do. But what we home grow mm -hmm. out the ground mm -hmm. is somebody doing something right now that's getting ready to change some shit right. mm -hmm. in the hood. Right for sure, Definitely. out of necessity. Yeah. Sure. Out of it's always willing, coming up. It's co always changing. Yeah, it's, it's always coming up. So somebody's behind you. Somebody on your ass. <laughs> on your ass. <laughs> yeah, that's the name of this game. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yep. So with that said, mm -hmm. you got to understand that we, if, if we accept that we grow this, mm -hmm. and this is what we are, how do we maximize getting our dollars? And we haven't figured out how to do that yet mm -hmm. because we keep buying into something that is we think is the way. Oh, I got signed. Mm -hmm. I, when somebody tell me that, I'll be like, man, I feel bad for you, bro. Mm -hmm. <laughs> not not to no about, not to yeah. no regular shit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, opening these boutique labels, that's the future. Mm. Small labels like they used to be Mercury, A and M, mm -hmm. the, those are the boutique labels mm -hmm. that we can do in Mer Motown. Mm -hmm. That has got to and what was that? That was the heyday of black music mm -hmm. because Cadillac records. Cadillac records. Now you mm -hmm. got to do good deals. Right. You gotta go. You can't. We can't bring that part of it back. Yeah, you yeah, can't yeah. bring the bad deals. Yeah, we can't bring it. Here's a Cadillac. Yeah, can't go rob people. Yeah, right. You can't Here's rob people. But if you always look at those labels, you always look at those situations. There was always still the other side that was running it. Mm -hmm. But if we black owned by us, we have to be responsible in giving de deals that's going to help make everybody rich. Everybody eats. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Everybody eats on the block. Yeah. Right. Period. Definitely. This is definitely our longest episode yet, but it's definitely For been worth reason. it. I could watch it 10 times over. Yeah. Um, yeah we got to get to work. So, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's definitely work time. So, see this popping outside. Um, <laughs> got anything coming up? Anything you want to say to the people or anything? No, Check man. you out here. I mean, there. we're, we're, uh, we're gearing up for, uh, you know, run. 
Um, Mm -hmm. We got a lot of things that we've been working on. We've been going since January. I got here January 15th. Mm -hmm. We haven't taken a day off. Mm -hmm. Um, We've had, you know, Interscope in the building just bringing us artists. Uh, We've had different different, uh, things that people will see coming up within the next seven, six, seven months Mm -hmm. uh, that we've been doing. Uh, The one that I'm most excited about, and I know when I say this, people are going to be like, what? Iggy Azalea. (laughs) <laughs> Iggy Azalea. That's all you I'm excited. gonna say. Okay, when okay. you hear it, it's us. Okay. okay, okay. Me and Trick executive producing the record. Fire. I'll be playing it for people, and they'd be like, "That's what? Yeah. <laughs> that's who? How? Right? <laughs> Nobody's expecting it. Um, that's that that's the one. I love doing the ones that ain't nobody expecting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That we go and light up. So at least in my feelings, I know that the response to the work, we got some heat coming. Mm-hmm. Um, with that, there's uh obviously the artist that we have signed here. Um, we're still trying to crack the code on some of the artists, MKXYZ. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, we have uh, this girls group out of Australia that we're working with, Horizon. Mm-hmm. Um, we're excited about them. Um, we have this uh, another artist, is a pop artist named Alice that we're working with. Mm-hmm. Um, there's, you know, we're in a combination of doing things for the outside, you know, still for the game, but still, and that's just because people call us. You know, like, yo, we need a record. Mm-hmm. So we're doing that, but really with the focus on the things that we're bringing in-house uh, that, that we're developing. And that takes some time. So, yeah. you know, I know people maybe know X- MKXYZ. We've been, you know her. Mm-hmm. We've yeah, been definitely. working on her for five MK's years. super talented. We've been trying to break her for five years. Definitely. We will break her. Yeah. yeah. But it's been it's a it's a journey. Yeah. Right. It's a, even for us, it's not that easy. It's yeah. not. It's still the same yeah. journey. It's the right. same game. Yeah, same game. We're trying to crack the code on her to get the audience to go, that's what I fuck with about her. Mm-hmm. Okay. So. Everything I just said, we in the process of doing, Definitely. you know, and it's 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 it, those businesses are seeding and and growing at their own pace. Okay, you know, and then I think the last thing would be uh, putting the session studio in a couple other markets. Mm. We're looking at go. probably doing that. Mm-hmm. Um, they need it. Yeah, I don't know the markets yet, but I know they Miami. need it. Miami. Miami. Definitely oh. needs it. <laughs> definitely, definitely, could, definitely needs it. I'm Laney Stewart. I'm here on the Hidden Hands podcast with Cruz. And Travis, we chopping it up the game.